Are you paying attention? Good. If you're not listening carefully, you will miss things. Important things. I will not pause, I will not repeat myself, and you will not interrupt me. You think that because you're sitting where you are, and I am sitting where I am, that you are in control of what is about to happen. You're mistaken. I am in control. Because I know things that you do not know. Project to the MPL. Project. You won't sell this on. Professor Jury, Detective Knock, Manchester Police. Sergeant Starler told me he had a burglary last night. Professor Jury. Take a step back. Don't breathe heavily. Breathe. And I don't need to try it out. It would take more than a little for the kill. Disappointing. Well, I, I, I think for a bit more. Sergeant Stiles, it just made up. You get the sense that we're being insulted. Last night, you had a break. You know, Mr. Springmont called to report the noise. He said there was quite a ruckus, only the same thing was taken. It's odd. So, how about you tell us what happened and we'll find the chap that did this? <laughs> Gentlemen, I, I don't believe that you could find the chap that did this if uh, he walked up to you and spat in your face. Uh, what I could use right now is not a Bobby, but a really good king lady. So, and this one who has a, an apron in your car, I suggest you file a report in. Even in her. As I said, Professor Jim. Let's not look with your son, am I? Think you're crediting an end in more insufferable son. A bit forced, though, isn't it? I don't know what you mean. Well, if you don't want a pair of bobbies sticking around in your personal affairs, that would be a stellar way to make sure they don't. Tell me you don't think this is suspicious. I don't think this is suspicious. A mysterious professor who won't admit he's had something stolen from his house. I think I'll endure as I need something. I have to tell you now, 
They know that I'm the king of the king of the city. And they can't speak there. This country is at war with Germany. Oh, uh, the lady told me to wait in my office. She told you to help yourself to tea while you were here? Uh, no, she didn't. She obviously didn't tell you what a joke was then either, I gather. Was she supposed to? Who are you? Alan Turing. Yeah, Turing. A mathematician. Correct. However, could I have guessed when you didn't be disputed on that piece of paper? King's College, Cambridge. Now, it says here you were a bit of a prodigy in the maths department, but I'm not sure I can evaluate that. Mr. How old are you, Mr. Chair? Uh, 27. And how old were you when you became a fellow of Cambridge? 24. And how old were you when you published this paper? Well, that's a title and I can barely understand. Uh, at, at 23. And you don't think that qualifies you as a certified prodigy? Well, you discovered binomial theorem age 22. Einstein wrote four papers that changed the world by the age of 26. As far as I can tell, I've barely <laughs> made part. I'm going to do a Will you could I make a joke? No, I don't think you know what those are. Well, it seems fair that that's a requirement for employment here, Mr. Commander Denniston, Royal Navy. All right, Mr. Turing, I'll bite. Why do you wish to work for His Majesty's government? Oh, I don't really. Are you a bleeding pacifist? I'm agnostic about that. But you do realise that 600 miles away from London, there's this nasty little chap called Hitler who wants to engulf Europe in terror. Politics isn't really my area of expertise, really. Well, I believe you just set the record for the shortest job interview in British military history. Oh, uh, <laughs> Mother says I could be operating sometime, though I'm account of being one of the best mathematicians in the world. In the world? Oh, yes. Do you know how many people I've rejected for this programme? No. Yeah. Well, that's right, because we're in the top secret program. But I'll tell you, just because of the friends, that only last week I rejected one of our great nation's top linguists, no German, better than Bertolt Brecht. I don't speak German. What? I don't speak German. Well, how the hell are you supposed to decrypt German communications if you don't go <laughs> oh, I don't know. speak German? Well, I'm really quite excellent at crossword puzzle. Margaret! The German codes are a puzzle, a game, just like any other game. Well, I think you're very good at games, uh, puzzles, and uh, this is the most uh, difficult puzzle in the world. Margaret! For the love of God, this is a joke, obviously. I'm afraid I don't know what those are, Commander Denniston. I'm a person trip back to Cambridge, Professor. Enigma. Oh. Out of university, you 
you, you need me a lot more than I need you. I, I like solving problems, Commander. And Enigma is the most difficult problem in the world. No, Enigma isn't difficult, it's impossible. The Americans, the Russians, the French, the Germans, everyone thinks Enigma is unbreakable. Good. Let me try, and we'll know for sure, won't we? Welcome to Enigma. Details of every surprise attack, every secret convoy, and every U boat on the bloody Atlantic going for that thing. And out comes gibberish. It's beautiful. The crooked hand of death itself. Our rents intercept thousands of radio messages today. And to the lovely young ladies of the Women's Royal Navy, they're nonsense. It's only when you feed them back into an enigma that they make any sense. But we have an enigma machine. Yeah, but it's intelligent smuggling out of Berlin. So what's the problem? Just put the interceptor messages back into the enigma and you'll get it. It's not that simple. You see, just having an enigma machine doesn't help you to decode the messages. Very good, Mr. Turing. To decode a message, you need to know the machine settings. Now the Germans switch settings every day promptly at midnight. We usually intercept our first message around 6 a.m. It gives you exactly 18 hours every day to crack the code before it changes and you start again. My word is 10 on board cables. That's one million. That is a million. It's a million, million. No, it's in the millions, obviously. It's over 150 million, million, million possible settings. Very good. 159. Do you want to be exact? One five nine. The days in zero is right. Possibility. Every single day. Gentlemen, meet you, Alexander. I personally selected him to run this unit. Didn't you? Mr. Alexander won Britain's national chess championship. Twice. You're not the only one who's good at games, I'm here to tell you. Uh, we need to work together then. I prefer to have my own office. You're a team, you will work as one. I, I don't have time to explain myself uh, as I go along. I'm, I'm afraid these men will only slow me down. But if you can't play together, then I'm afraid we can't you play at all. This is Stuart Mingus, MI6. There are only five divisions of military intelligence. There is no MI6. Exactly. That's the spirit. Jerry, do you know how many British servicemen have died because of Nicholas? 